Hello grade 12s. Today we are going to look at the rates at which chemical reactions take place. We'll also see what brings about these different rates. Chemical reactions happen all around us every second of the day. In every chemical reaction, the reactants that are present at the start change into products. Remember, we explain chemical changes using the collision theory. We call a collision in which product molecules form an effective collision. Some reactions, like an explosion, can happen very quickly. But some reactions, like the oxidation of iron to form rust, are slow. Can you suggest why different chemical reactions take different amounts of time to form products? Well, the answer to this question is linked to the idea of a reaction rate. And that's what we will focus on in this lesson. We will define the rate of a reaction and find out how we can change the reaction rate. Let's chat with one of my learners, Kanye. She has a problem and has asked for help. I think it's related to reaction rates. Hello, and thank you for agreeing to help me with my problem. It's a pleasure. I like learners who want to know how things work. Well, often when I study for exams, I get a headache, and I'll take a headache tablet, but it takes a long time for it to go away. So I was wondering if there's a quicker way for it to go away, because I can't study when I've got a headache, and it takes up so much of my study time. The time it takes for your headache to go away will depend on the medication. I know that advertisers say that tablets in a powder form work quicker than tablets that are in a solid form. Well, I don't understand how that works because aren't they both supposed to have the same amount of substance? Well, let's do an investigation to find out if the advertisers' claims are true. I have two of the same headache tablets here. Now I'll crush one of the tablets so that it's in a powdered form and leave the other one whole. To test if there is any difference between the action of the single tablet and the powdered form, I'll place them in different beakers with the same amount of water. Which one do you think will change quickest? I think it will be the tablet in powdered form. Let me check with my stopwatch. Good. This will be our hypothesis for our investigation. The tablet in powdered form will react faster than a whole tablet. Now, let's prove or disprove our hypothesis. Kanye, please use your stopwatch to time how long it takes for the chemical substance in each beaker to react fully. Watch carefully to see what might happen next. When a chemical reaction happens, we will usually see a change in color or gas bubbles rising. Kanye, start the stopwatch as soon as I put the tablets into the water. What are the results of our investigation? While the chemicals in the tablet produce bubbles when added to water, which tells us that there's some sort of reaction going on. The powder tablet took 55 seconds to finish producing bubbles, and the whole tablet took 2 minutes and 25 seconds to finish its reaction. And what does that tell us about our hypothesis? That our hypothesis was correct, I think. Yes. So we can make a conclusion. The tablet in powdered form reacted faster than the whole tablet. I can see the whole tablet and the powder made bubbles in water, but while the time's different, we use the same reactants from identical tablets and the same amount of water. That's because the reaction rates of the two reactions were different. The reaction rate, or rate of reaction, is the amount of product formed in a certain time. After 55 seconds, all of the crushed tablet reacted, while some of the uncrushed tablet remained unreacted. 
We say that the reaction rate for the crushed tablet is high because more product formed in 55 seconds compared to the solution containing the whole tablet. Chemists use collision theory to explain why there is a difference in reaction rates for different reactions. When a small number of collisions takes place in a certain time, few product particles form and we say the rate of reaction is low. When lots of collisions take place in a certain time, more particles of the product form and we say the reaction rate is high. I get it. The powder tablet reacted faster than the whole tablet because of the effective collisions between the water particles and the small particles of the tablet as compared to the whole tablet and the water particles around it. That's right, Kanye. When we crush a solid like the tablet, we are increasing the surface area of the solid. If we increase the surface area of a solid reactant, then we also increase the contact points where particles can collide. And so, there is an increase in the number of effective collisions taking place. Because of this, more product molecules form in a short time, so the reaction rate increases. If we change the surface area of other solid reactants, would we also increase the rate of reaction? Let's try it and see. Can you predict which will have a higher rate of reaction? Two grams of powdered zinc or two grams of zinc granules, both placed in a sample of the same hydrochloric acid. I have added some dishwashing liquid to trap the gas released. Watch and see what happens. Can you see that bubbles of hydrogen are forming more quickly in the test tube with the powdered zinc? This means that the rate of reaction for the powdered zinc is higher than for the zinc granules. It looks like there was more foam formed when the powdered zinc reacted than when the zinc granules did. Is that correct? That's a good observation, Kanye. Let's have a closer look at the test tubes. Can you see that most of the powdered zinc has reacted, but the zinc granules are still producing bubbles? We started with exactly the same amount of reactants, so eventually we will produce exactly the same amount of products. We call the amount of product formed in a reaction the yield of a reaction. In these two reactions, the rates are different, but when both reactions are complete, the yields will be the same. That makes sense. It looks like the zinc granules will take forever to react completely. Are there any other ways that we could increase the rate of reaction? Yes, there are. Increasing the surface area of a solid is only one of five methods. The other factors that affect the reaction rate are temperature, the concentration of reactants, pressure in gas reactions, and adding a catalyst. Let's look at each of the other methods in turn. What do you think will happen if we increase the temperature of the reactants? Perhaps apply collision theory to help you make a prediction. By increasing the temperature, we are giving the particles more kinetic energy. This makes them move faster, which increases the number of effective collisions. I think that means the rate of reaction increases too. Yes, it does. Good conclusion, Kanye. Can you think of an everyday reaction where temperature affects the reaction rate? What about cooking? When you want potatoes to cook faster, you increase the temperature. Good. Here's another food-related example. Fruit rots quicker in warmer conditions than in cooler places like the fridge. The next factor we need to consider is the concentration of the reactants. We use concentration for gases and solutions. 
we are able to increase the reaction rate by increasing the concentration of one or more of the reactants. Remember, we define concentration of a solution as the number of moles of solute divided by the volume of the solution. And the concentration of a gas is the number of moles of gas divided by the volume of the container. If we increase the concentration of a solution, we also increase the number of particles present. This increases the chance of the particles colliding. For example, let's think of acid rain. Higher concentrations of acid in rain will erode marble statues faster. Here we can see the acid rain reaction on marble. Marble or calcium carbonate reacts faster with a higher concentration of acid. This means more carbon dioxide bubbles are released over the same time period. An everyday example would be when we wash greasy pots and pans. The dishwashing liquid breaks up the fat molecules and dissolves them. If we only use a few drops of dishwashing liquid, it will take longer to clean a greasy pot. But if we use a few teaspoons of dishwashing liquid, we will remove the grease quicker. Now, our next factor, pressure, affects gas reactions. Can you predict what will happen if we increase the pressure on gases in a container? We can increase the pressure on a gas by decreasing the volume. By doing this, we are forcing the gas particles closer together. This means we increase the concentration too. We know that when we increase concentration, we increase the number of effective collisions and so increase the rate of reaction. A car's engine works because a gaseous mixture of petrol and air is placed under pressure in the cylinder of the engine. Air and petrol enter the cylinder when the piston moves down. Now the piston pushes up compressing the mixture of petrol and air. This increase in pressure means that all the molecules are now close together and only a small spark will start the reaction between the oxygen and petrol. The reaction takes place very quickly and produces gaseous products and releases lots of energy. This added pressure from products and energy release pushes the piston down again. Next, the piston is forced up, pushing the exhaust fumes out. The cycle begins again and carries on very rapidly, keeping cars moving continuously. The last factor that affects the rate of chemical reactions is the addition of a catalyst. Remember, a catalyst is a substance that can take part in a reaction without undergoing a permanent chemical change itself. A catalyst lowers the activation energy of a reaction by providing a surface for reactant molecules to collide. So in the presence of a catalyst, more effective collisions will take place and the rate of a reaction will increase. We can increase the reaction rate of zinc with sulfuric acid with the addition of copper. So in this case, copper is the catalyst. <laughs> See how the amount of bubbles have increased after the copper was added. Now, 
Let's apply what we have learned about reaction rates and see if we can increase the reaction rates of the following reaction. Calcium carbonate plus hydrochloric acid will produce calcium chloride, water and carbon dioxide. Remember the small s in a chemical equation stands for solid. The AQ stands for aqueous, which means it's in a solution. And the L is for pure liquid. An easy way to check for an increase in the reaction rate of this reaction is to see when the number of bubbles of CO2 increases. How can we increase the rate of the reaction? Well, if the calcium carbonate is a solid like it is here, we could increase the rate of the reaction by crushing the calcium carbonate into a powder to increase the surface area. That would work. Is there another way we could increase this reaction rate? As you can see, hydrochloric acid is in the solution. So if we increase its concentration, we also increase the rate of the reaction. There are two more ways to increase the rate of this reaction. Do you know what they are? The rate will increase if we increase the temperature. Good idea. Or if we add a catalyst. Well, I hope you can remember those five ways of increasing or decreasing the rate of chemical reactions. We will look at reaction rates in more detail in this series, but I think we've had enough for one lesson. It will be helpful to try some questions relating to this topic. There are questions in the rate of reaction task video. Also look on our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn for more details on this series. Until next time, grade 12s, take care.